You have started the computer-based training session on wiring diagrams, part one. This chapter explains why you should use a wiring diagram and the different types of diagrams available. The generic diagram for this course is introduced and you learn how to find diagrams in the binders using the function groups. This chapter explains why you should use a wiring diagram and the different types of diagrams available. The generic diagram for this course is introduced and you learn how to find diagrams in the binders using the function groups. The complexity of vehicle wiring systems is increasing owing to customer requests for improved levels of safety, comfort and equipment together with the environmental demands for lower emissions. Consequently, electrics are used in virtually all areas of the vehicle, which makes diagnosing and rectifying problems should they occur more difficult. To meet this challenge, all technicians at the very least need a working knowledge of how to trace electrical circuits and locate their various connections. In this example, the technician has the job of diagnosing why this vehicle won't start. From experience, he's quickly established that it's something to do with the starter circuit. But which of all these cables belong to the starter circuit? To avoid becoming confused, the technician needs a map, much as you would to find your way around a strange town or city. The Mercedes-Benz wiring diagrams are just that a map of the miscellaneous wires, connections and components which together comprise the vehicle's electrical circuits. Therefore, to help diagnose the cause of even relatively straightforward electrical faults, such as our starter problem, you need to understand the wiring diagrams. This first part of the CBT program includes information suitable for all workshop personnel, irrespective of whether you work on passenger cars, light commercial vehicles or heavy trucks. The wiring diagrams are available on paper within the workshop manual binders or in the workshop information system, known as WIS. However, whether they're viewed on paper or on CD, interpreting them remains the same. This CBT program guides you through the wiring diagrams and will help you to learn how they're laid out and to get to know the meaning of the various symbols. The electrical circuits are shown as black lines and the components are depicted by symbols. Generally, the wiring diagrams and those in this program depict the vehicle's electrical circuits as they would be in the following conditions. The battery connected, all components switched off, the ignition switched off, and the ignition key removed. In this CBT program, you will work with a graphical wiring diagram. It's generic, meaning that it's not specific to any model, but has been specially designed to include lots of different items. Please remember, though, that because it is a special diagram, then some of the component designations may be different to those on the diagrams found in your workshop. To simplify the finding of diagrams, they're arranged within the binders according to function group. For example, function group 15 contains all the diagrams for the starter and generator circuits. Likewise, diagrams for the instrumentation and fuse boxes are found in function group 54. 
the function groups range from 0, 0 to 91. Here are some function group examples. Click on a number to find out to which area of the electrical systems they relate. Because some vehicles have many different wiring diagrams, there are often too many to fit into one binder. In these instances, they're split into separate volumes. Therefore, towards the front of each binder is a list of the included function groups and a description of what's contained within them. With a little practice, many of the function group numbers will become second nature. So in the future, when you're looking for a wiring diagram for the starter circuit, for example, you instinctively look in section 15. Furthermore, the first page of each function group section has a contents page. It lists all the diagrams in that function group and the models for which they're applicable. The list has several columns listing the wiring diagram number, the title of the diagram, and the models for which they're applicable. Incidentally, the function group also forms two digits of the wiring diagram number found at the bottom right-hand corner of every diagram. In this example, because the diagram number includes the function group 15, it identifies that it's a diagram containing the starter and generator circuits. For background information, you can click on the remaining characters of the diagram number to find out what they mean. To assist you if you're unsure of which function group a particular electrical system is in, there's a search aid in Chapter A of the binder. It's called Search Aid for All the Wiring Diagram Groups and lists the vehicle's systems, additional notes and the actual wiring diagram number. Furthermore, on some models you'll find an additional list containing a search aid for all components. It lists the components, their abbreviations, and the wiring diagram number. This chapter explains how the diagrams are laid out on a grid system. By using numbers and letters, you learn how to use the legend. The diagrams are laid out on a grid system. Numbers, in numerical order, run across the top and bottom frames of the diagram. Letters run in alphabetical order down both sides of the diagram. Moreover, each component on the diagram is classified by a unique designation comprising a letter and numbers. To find a component on the diagram, for example the starter motor, first refer to the legend. Next, look through the legend to find the title starter and note its designation and grid reference. In this instance, it is designation M1, and it's located at grid reference 5J. To find the component on the diagram, simply draw imaginary lines from the two grid references, and where the two cross, you'll find the designation and symbol for the starter motor. Incidentally, the grid reference is always expressed as the number followed by the letter. Now you try. Use the legend to find the battery, and then when you've found it, click on the symbol on the diagram. Yes, well done. As you can see, finding a component is quite straightforward. 